Unfortunately, my only skill in life is hitting a ball with a racket. I want you to be my coach. I want you to be my coach. On va commencer par le meilleur. Hello, thanks for joining us for Arts24 today. It's 40 years after the release of his sensational sci-fi thriller Terminator. To celebrate, Paris's Cinémathèque Française is showcasing iconic filmmaker James Cameron's talent. Sophie Lamotte reports on the retrospective exhibition that opened earlier this month. He's an icon in Hollywood. James Cameron directed blockbusters like Titanic, Avatar and Terminator. His directing secrets are revealed in an exhibition at the Cinémathèque de Paris. At the opening early April, visitors were eager to find out more about his work. He's a guy who always had incredible ideas with excellent directing skills. He makes the world dream. He makes all of us shiver and brings out emotions. Every time he does something, it's innovative. He came up with lots of new special effects, especially in Terminator. Without him, we wouldn't have the movies we have today. His greatest films were born on paper. James Cameron loves to draw. Terminator is a vision, a nightmare, that he painted when he woke up. I thought, maybe I'll write a novel and I'll illustrate it. I was thinking in panels, I was thinking in frames, so I was really thinking in shots, if you think about it. So the transition into filmmaking was really pretty easy. James Cameron isn't just a daydreamer. His films break all the records, like Titanic. I'm flying! When Leonardo DiCaprio draws Kate Winslet, the portrait is actually signed by Cameron himself. It's the director's hand we see in the images. Here's the original centerpiece of the exhibit in Paris. And after your death. His latest hit, Avatar. This is our home! 3D experiments, underwater live action filming, and extraordinary special effects. James Cameron is always at the forefront of technology. In his 40-year career, he's explored water, space, with futuristic epics and historical reconstructions. His next film has already been shot. Avatar 3 will hit the movie theatres in late 2025. Well, next to a film that's getting some steamy reviews, Challengers tells the story of the romantic entanglement of three young tennis players and their journey of lust, love and ruinous competition. Zendaya, Josh O'Connor and Mike Face star in this extravagantly sexy take on Chaucer's The Knight's Tale. Let's take a look. How is she, Duncan? She's in another league. You were incredible today. Come on! To have a fashion line, a foundation. It's going to turn a whole family into millionaires. Ah! What are you going to do now? Unfortunately, my only skill in life is hitting a ball with a racket. I want you to be my coach. I want you to be my coach. How often does this happen? Going after the same girl? I remember my early tennis lessons, and I was like, ooh, I got a long way to go. Um, yeah, no, tennis, I mean, I'm, I'm grateful to this film for honestly introducing me to the world of tennis. I didn't have, uh, you know, that, I didn't, I wasn't, not that I wasn't a tennis fan, I just didn't know much about the, the, the game. And I think through this, I've really gotten to learn and, and understand and appreciate, I think, on a greater level, what it takes to truly be a tennis player. So um, I definitely am in admiration of those who do it. Well, next to the French actor and director, best known for his 1995 film La Haine, which he wrote and starred in. Magic Asavitz is also known for his work on Amelie, The Bureau and The Crimson Rivers. At the moment, he's promoting two movies, a series, a documentary and a musical. Louise Dupont has been speaking to him. Hello, Mathieu Kassovitz. Hello. Recently, French newspaper Libération wrote Mathieu Kassovitz is back. Clearly, they weren't exaggerating. A few months after your motorbike accident, you're working on several projects. But first, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Did you fully recover from this motorbike mishap? Absolutely. Let's start talking about the movie Les Frères, or Brothers in English, by Olivier Cassas. It tells the incredible true story of two brothers who were abandoned as children after the Second World War and who survived in the forest for years. How did you react when you first discovered this story? I read it like a scenario. 
But of course, I felt some empathy for the real characters. It's one of these incredible true stories that are always a pleasure to discover. In the movie, Michel seems to accept this completely unique experience to be left to his own devices in the forest and afterwards manages to lead a normal life. But your character, Patrice, struggles to move forward. How do you think he would have reacted to this experience? Do you ever put yourself in your character's shoes and ask yourself, what if it was me? Yes, but also no, because it's impossible to put yourself in the shoes of someone who's lived through a tragedy, just like it's impossible for them to put themselves in your shoes. You could argue that it's the actor's job to do that, but, you know... And I'm tired of saying this, but what's happening inside the mind of an actor or a character in a movie isn't what the actor really feels when they're on set. On set, you're just thinking about going home late. You're tired of doing 30 takes. It's the music that the director or the editor adds that gives people the impression that the actor is involved in his character, that he's thinking the same way. It's manipulation. Actors can be thinking about anything. It's all about the director and the music. You also star in the new French film Les Rois de la Piste by Thierry Cliffa. Critics praised you in this nearly slapstick comedy and it's not a type of role we used to see you in. Why is that? I don't know. You have to ask the director. I'm up for working on anything that's fun with people who know what they want. I'm very strict when it comes to directing. For instance, the place of music in a movie, the way to deal with emotions and manipulate the viewer. These are all things that matter to me. But acting is the opposite of directing. Directing is an intellectual effort where you try to fit pieces of a puzzle together, including actors. And actors are just there to look at themselves in the mirror and try to look their best. <laughs> How come then you've been acting more than directing these days? It's easier and it pays better. <laughs> and you're maybe less vulnerable to criticism? It's true, as an actor, everyone loves you. Nobody will tell you that you were awful in a movie. But it's more often that directors get told their movies are bad. Speaking of directing, you've been working on another project, a documentary called Cannabis, co-directed with Antoine Robin and broadcast on France 5 in prime time. Pendant un an, j'ai fait le tour du monde. Maroc, Espagne, Pays-Bas, Canada. Pour questionner, constater et enquêter sur ces pays qui ont choisi la légalisation. Et j'étais loin d'imaginer tout ce que j'allais découvrir. You say your goal is not that we legalize cannabis, but at least that we think about it. Exactly. I've been a user myself for a long time. And today I can get access to the product very easily. But I'm increasingly worried because I've realized that I don't always know what I'm smoking. I don't really know the people I'm buying from. There is no information. And a lot of people have no idea what cannabis actually is. So we filmed this very general story about countries that have legalized cannabis and about France's position in a world where it's increasingly legal. Germany just legalized it, Switzerland has as well. Italy is opening up to it, same with Morocco. We're surrounded by countries where cannabis is legal. Let's move on to series. You're in the Netflix show Fury alongside Marina Foyce and Lina El Arabi, an immersion into the world of Parisian organized crime. We all remember your character of Malotru in the show The Bureau, which marks an important turn in your acting career. 
Does this series format have a special place in your heart compared to movies? I think shows can be interesting when you have a recurring character like Malotru in The Bureau. It's a special feeling to come back every year to participate in the character's evolution and have a real relationship with him, and also to talk to people in the street who evolved alongside this character. It's extremely fun and rewarding. You don't have that with cinema. When you finish the movie, you go home and you forget about it until it's time to do promotion interviews. But shows stay alive. That's what's interesting. Thank you, Mathieu Kassovitz. Thank you. Matthew Kasovich speaking to Louise Dupont. Now we're going to leave you with something slightly different on the big screen. Fans of K-pop girl group Espa will be able to see a film with behind the scenes images of their debut world tour in May. It coincides with the release of their debut album Armageddon. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Thank you.